Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the Green Gold Farm Initiative channel uh, where we focus on sustainable organic farming. My name is Dennis Aine and of course by profession I'm a civil engineer but uh, of course I'm so passionate about organic uh, organic avocado farming so it's where my passion lies of course and so <clears throat> in today's video it has been a while I've been off the farm but uh, here I am I'm back and I'm back at my farm. Uh, <coughs> I've spent most of the time trying to inquire from my friends. I've visited several farms, people who are doing different stuff in farming and of course who are passionate about organic farming specifically. And uh, so my biggest interest in moving around uh, to different farms was to be able to appreciate the importance of irrigation and so I had to visit several farmers uh, including of course my friends of uh, Rafik Africa uh, in Sembaure and so many other farmers who are specifically into organic farming so I was able to, to learn uh, <coughs> a lot I was able to learn a lot and of course so many factors that I had to that I didn't know which should always be taken into a consideration so i want to of course share with you probably you also want to at one point maybe uh or soon do an irrigation system and of course at our farm currently we don't have irrigation system but very soon we hope to 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 install irrigation system and that will be a solar powered uh, drip irrigation system in which all of these trees will have a, a water outlet to, to, to be able to have something, especially during dry season. So, of course, um, being a dry season for the uh, last months, I wanted to know how other farmers are doing. And so I visited them. And um, <clears throat> my friends at Rafik Africa, Joachim, by invite of Joachim, I was able to to, to learn a lot and um, of course it's where I actually learned that before you even think of irrigation system it's very good and it's very important that you first appreciate the weather patterns of that area and so we had to first of all identify what are the weather patterns what's the rain in that area the temperatures all those factors about the weather was taken into good consideration then secondly we also wanted uh, there was also a need to first of all identify and know the soil the type of soil that they are having the type of soil that you you're having how is it how does it behave with water what is its retainability capacity like how does it retain water for how long does it hold water so that's very very important and uh, we had to even go through all the process of testing the soils uh, of course doing the lab and everything so at the end of the day we wanted to know how best we can do this irrigation system because it is automated you're able to calculate how much water do you need in the soil for your trees or for your crops and uh, that makes it more easier for such trees to have the, the, the enough water, adequate water, but not excess water. Because sometimes when you give them excess, for example, like avocados, definitely they will have to have issues of root rot. That's where the roots start rotting because of too much water. So, of course, we started with a um, uh, weather station. We had to set a weather station and, of course, uh, Thanks to uh, Professor Ricardo, who is the professor of irrigation system, who came all the way from Spain with that station. I want to tell you that it is a, it's a one of its kind. That weather station, I think in Uganda, this was the fourth one. And um, it's, it's, it's very, very important that at any point, at any part of the world, you can be able, as long as you have internet, as long as you have uh, where okay access for internet you can always go there and be able to 
to check what's the data in your area. Now that it was, of course, installed in Sembawule, the people around that area can always, whether you're in UK, whether you're in Kenya, whether you're in Zimbabwe, South Africa, or any part of the world, you can still uh, be able to come through and see the weather, how it is performing in your area. And uh, the, 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 this specific weather station which was installed, it is able to actually give give you a couple of 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 data. For example, it will it be able to detect the temperatures. It will give you the temperatures. It will give you the humidity. It will give you the uh, rain data. It will give you the wind speed, the wind direction. Then, of course, even the solar radiation. Okay, you're able to know all those. So it is really very important and it is so useful. And uh, maybe for someone who is within those areas, or there are so many in this in this world of the same, but um, you find that in some countries, like here in Uganda, for example, there are only four, including this one. One is in Fort Porter, I think. One is also in Kampala. Another one, uh, there are a couple of them, like th two of them in around Kampala. And also now that one in Zimbabwe. So if you go to, I'm going to put a link in which you download this app, which is called EcoWit. EcoWit, like E C O W I W T. So you'll be able to 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 download it. I put it down in the link. The link is there, so you be able to download it and be able to view. The temperatures, different temperatures, different uh, rain data, all the weather pattern you'll be they will be you'll be able to check. And something amazing with this um, <coughs> our weather station is that it actually updates itself every after five minutes. So in other words, if it rains now, within five minutes it has updated. Within the next five minutes it has updated. So it's so amazing, and of course. Uh, many thanks to Ricardo and the uh, university. I keep forgetting about it, but um, and then of course Joachim, then um, of course uh, Laula, Madame Laula, who made this possible. So having idea, uh, being able to have an equipment in place that is able to tell us how we are performing in terms of weather. So we went ahead, like I said, to identify to be able to determine how this soil performs and so we had to take some samples on different levels of the soil uh, one was at 15 meters uh, sorry at 15 centimeters then the next one was at 30 centimeters then the next one was at 60 meters going deep the soil so we would take like three three samples so we took them of course the whole aim was about to identify how do they perform okay in terms of retaining water and uh, this is very very important and uh, I need to tell you that uh, having uh, first of all put them into dry conditions like there is no um, external water in it now we are able to put water at different intervals Intervals are meaning at different uh, times, like we give three hours, we had an interval of three hours. So we are able now at the end of the day, the data was, we are able to know how much um, this soil uh, retains water. So in other words, this helps you when you're irrigating to know if I've released this amount of, of water, how long shall it take for me? again come back and add in now like for example it is of course it is, it is still a dry season though it's getting away and uh, sometimes the rate at which the water evaporates the moisture evaporates from the ground is always high so but by such tests you're able to identify and so after that with the team um, from one of the best of course irrigation company here in the country um, we are able to to start uh, with uh, 
excavating, making a, a layout for how the pipes are going to run. And of course, the pipes were, the, way, the, the, the trench were dug. And after that, then the pipes were put down. Then of course, most important, we are using solar system. We are using solar system, of course, too. And I would recommend solar system because, well, it has a, a high initial cost, but it is very good. It is so good. It's so clean to environment. It's so, it, in the long run, it's actually cheap. It is very cheap. And uh, when you automate it, for you, you just need to come and open, for example, for these trees, and then they will be having water. So you don't need to, it, the, 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 the human, um, human labor is somehow reduced with solar powered irrigation system. So we had to, of course, install the solar panels. And uh, after that, uh, we connected them with, uh, of course, with a pump. Then we also had a, we also had a sensor, which of course is able to detect that our reservoir, sorry, our water storage, the tank, it is full, and now it automatically stops the pump from pumping water. And how does it how how it, it works is that you put a, a ball valve ball valve in that big tank that you you see and then after that once the water is enough just the way you see in the in the flushing toilets once the water reaches its level that ball valve will stop it will stop the the inlet that brings in water and now when it stops the inlet within that pipe because remember it is still pumping water upward so because there is a sensor which is connected onto this pipe, it will sense high pressure. And what does it do? It automatically stops itself, stops the pump until there is a room for more water to, to be put, to be sent. So we had to install that kind of uh, uh, system. And uh, of course, it was not a drip irrigation system. It was just um, some hydrant. So you can call it a sprinkle, whereby you can now get this, um, <clears throat> you can get a hose pipe and now you spray in different places, okay? So that was a good time uh, shared with uh, my colleague and uh, I learned a lot of things. There are so many things to consider. And one thing I want to tell you is that me, I'm committed to sharing the information what does it help me to remain with this information so whatever i learned i'm going to come and as we are installing irrigation system at this farm uh, many thanks to mama carora for 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 the hand in this so as we are st installing this irrigation system here we are going to of course we are going to I'm going to capture each and every detail and I'll be explaining it to you on how best you can do. And we are looking at a drip irrigation system, solar powered. So every step that we are going to do, we, should, we shall be sharing it with you. And of course, uh, well, we, we, are, we are going to very soon we'll be, we, we'll, we'll start on making a well probably on the other lower part of the orchard uh, we shall have to dig a well and then um, <clears throat> that is like a starting point and that's where now we shall be able to pump water from so uh, that's all I wanted to share with you and uh, please uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel you can subscribe you can like you can share to your friends and for now I'm very, I'm, I'm committed and I want to assure you that every, 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 every maximum two weeks I should be able to share a video and video that really has something to pick and always feel free to share with me uh, where you need me to, okay, to improve. Uh, you can write in the comment section so that I know how best we can work together because uh, it's two way uh, we learn from each other. So thank you so much. 
Bye-bye.